We haven't since World War II. NYU students loved irony far more than sports. No football team. So jocks were not a common sight at my college. But then I didn't see hockey friend at first. I smelled him. I smelled his clothes anyway for more than a month in the windowless basement of the Weinstein Hall where we did our laundry surrounded by cinder blocks and the occasional roach. One crawled onto my leg for the first time I did laundry there. A very welcome to New York moment. Hockey friends, hockey uniform, and gym bag were left to sit in the stink. And the stink they did. The gym bag smelled like an acrid mix of body odor, old shoes, and rotting garbage. It stunk up the whole basement. If anyone else was doing their laundry when you arrived, they'd greet you with, Smells like shit in here, huh? And if someone else arrived while you were doing yours, you'd see their face contort and disgust as soon as they stepped outside. We started asking each other, is it still here and is it yours? But it still was and it never was. Eventually people started leaving handwritten notes by the bag, begging him to please just wash his clothes already or get a locker somewhere. One girl wrote a very nice long note full of smiley faces promising that she could help him do his laundry if he didn't know how to do his own. But he never took her up on it and the gym bag remained in the same place for weeks or more. Then one day in late November, I went down to do my laundry and was immediately hit with the stench. It had seemed to get worse every week. It was too much for me and clearly too much for everyone else in the building. I'd had enough. I was 18 and impulsive and made a lot of well-meaning but careless decisions. We started asking each other, is it still here and is it yours? But it still was and it never was. Eventually people started leaving handwritten notes by the bag, begging him to please just wash his clothes already or get a locker somewhere. One girl wrote a very nice long note full of smiley faces promising that she could help him do his laundry if he didn't know how to do his own. But he never took her up on it and the gym bag remained in the same place for weeks or more. Then one day in late November, I went down to do my laundry and was immediately hit with the stench. It had seemed to get worse every week. It was too much for me and clearly too much for everyone else in the building. I'd had enough. I was 18 and impulsive and made a lot of well-meaning but careless decisions. Oops, did I just swear on television? Haha. <laughs> Please forgive me. It doesn't quite work though, and the pilot's pilot is ridiculous even for the 80s sitcom. An alien crashes into the Tanner's family garage, and they immediately bring the alien into their house. Their pathogens that the thing carries. Willie the dad is thrilled to meet an alien, but it turns out the alien speaks English, walks upright, and drinks beer. How did this show not give Carl Sagan an aneurysm? Things escalate very quickly with the mom waking up to find Alf sleeping in bed with her. That same morning, allegedly uptight Willie gets out of the shower, wet and completely nude, to find Alf sitting on the bathroom with them, and just asks Alf for a towel. Some of the government officials show up, but the children somehow already sin with this disgusting asshole that parents feel protective and don't turn him in. The Tanners... Yes, the Tanners never seem to address Alf's hideousness, and they love being around him despite his actively making everybody's lives worse. There's also the cat thing. He eats cats, he constantly chasing around the family's cat, lucky trying to eat it, and they act like it's just a mild annoyance. Like him leaving the toilet seat up. And let's be real, the whole eating cats thing was probably just a retooled canuck cunnilingus joke especially considering how phallic Alf's nose is. Austin Powers was subtler. It's also weird that he responds to Alf when that's not actually his name Alf just means alien life form. His real name is Gordon Shumway which could actually be a good one off joke. Strange alien creature has a very human vaguely Canadian name. Or it would be if they hadn't already run 
that into the ground by making everybody about Gordon Alf incredibly human. Well, except for the existing cats thing, but humans have done that and still do sometimes in some parts of the world. The he's your rude funny uncle but he's an alien thing doesn't work when he's neither particularly funny nor much of an alien. Alf's jokes are like a wasp impression of a borscht belt comedy and there are parts of the US Canada that are more distinct from each other than Earth and Alf's planet Melmac. By the puppeteer and creator Paul Fusco's own admission in this amazing mental floss oral history of the show. I was very against anything sci-fi in the show. I didn't want people to buy into anything other than Alf being real. Then what was the point of making him an alien? That was a wasted opportunity right there. Most creepy young girls love a garden. They may feel drawn to roses and their thorns, but will more likely love carnivorous plants and any plant that can defend itself. The whole idea of the garden is fascinating to them. Beauty and death and rebirth all at once. All these layers of life. The mushrooms that appear out of nowhere and then are gone as quickly as they came. Also spiders. So many spiders. Let the creepy young girl read whichever books she wants to read. Better yet, encourage her to read and take her to the library. Creep creepy young girls love a library. The books she reads will give her power, it's true, power far beyond her wildest imaginings. But she will remember forever that you are the one who led her to the books. Be patient with creepy young girl as she is discovering her powers. 